Hey guys, today I've got a new tutorial video, and in this video I'm, I'm going to be showcasing the Red Skull Digger from Actually Editions. So guys, the Red Skull Digger, honestly one of my favourite machines out of the entire Actually Editions mod. Really cool, recommend you guys check this one out. So before, you know, I get started, I'm just, you know, I'm going to pop this guy down in the world, and he has quite a nifty sort of interface. So we're... On his head, it will tell you what level he's mining at. Currently, he shouldn't really be mining any particular level because he's got no power, as you can see in the bottom left hand of the screen. And you'll open him up, and he has a reset button, a mode, and a 3x3 three three, um, inventory for him to store items once he has mined them. So what I'm going to do is a quick t um, demonstration for you guys, is put the creative capacitor bank down. I'm going to put him down here. And notice now he's just going to, you know, mine along, do his own business, and mine in a 5x5 five five radius. And currently he's set to mine everything. So as you can see, it says there, mining everything, and he's just going to mine anything he comes into contact with. So, you know, pretty useful, but you're probably wondering, how is this any advantage to sort of, you know, a build craft quarry, or, you know, like a, a one from the end quarry from, I believe it's Extra Utilities? Yeah, it's from Extra Utilities. So you're probably wondering, why is this any advantage over those? It's just digging in the 5x5, five five, it's not really very quick, and it's just digging up loads of waste stores. Well, not waste stores, but waste material that you're not necessarily going to need. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hook up some item conduits, and I'm going to hook this guy up to a chest. So I'm going to tell this guy to insert all of his items into here, using some... Whoops, I put that in the wrong setting. So there you go, extract and extract them into there. But what you can do is if you click reset, it will make him come back up to the top. So as you can see, he's now going through all of his layers. So that's basically what the reset bu button does. It makes him come back up to the top. Now what I'm going to do is um, show you what the phantom boosters do. Now you can make yourself these fairly expensively with some... The, I'm not entirely sure how to pronounce those crystals. But they're basically just diamonds, you know, in the atomic reconstructor. Ender casing, which is a bit more expensive, like black quartz, empowered crystals, and some ender pearls. And if you get yourself three of these, what you can do is you can essentially increase the radius of this thing. So it then goes from a 5x5, five five, and I believe you can stack them up to about three. And then if, if I reset it again, what it should do is it should start on the very top layer. And as you can see, now it is going through and mining all of these blocks. So as you can see, it's, it's, it now goes all the way out to here. And I'm not entirely sure what the radius of it is. I'm actually just going to quickly get myself a... Um, I believe you can use a tape measure. Um... Let's see, so if I say put the measurement, okay, I'm not really sure how to use the tape measure, so I'm not really going to use that. But you can see dramatically by putting three of those there, the radius has dramatically increased. The only thing is, it's getting me a lot of materials that I don't, I'm not really too interested in. I'm not really interested in getting this hardened clay, because I suppose most of you guys are just going to want ores. So let me just set it to daytime real quick. But what you can do to change it to modes, is change the mode, so now it's set to only mine ores. So as you can see now, if I reset it back to the top layer, it's going to go through all these blocks. And these phantom boosters do increase the speed of it, guys, as well. So um, as you can see, it's going a lot quicker than what it was when it was just doing the 5x5. Five five. And it's now going to mine all the ores. So as you can see, observe the ores now that are down there. As you can, as you can see, it is going around that it's actually picking up these ores, but it's not mining any of the other materials. So just bear this in mind, uh, this quarry it won't damage the train or anything, so this is a really neat you know, idea for a quarry, and it will just get you the ores, but it won't cause any damage to the terrain, it won't even mine the stone or anything, it will literally just pick up ores. So I suppose the advantage of this, you don't need any sort of cobblestone or waste material disposal system, you know, you can literally just hook it up, put it in only mining ores, and what it will do is it will then just mine any ores that it finds. Do bear in mind though, if you do want to start a mine shaft or anything, don't start it anywhere near where you've used this thing, as you will not have any luck, as this thing will have literally mined any, any ore that it comes across. And bear in mind, it is compatible with modded ore, so it's not just the vanilla ores that it will get. It is code to look for anything like appetite, anything that's basically a useful material underground that isn't the stone, it will pick up. So as you can see, if I just sort this out, as you can see, it's just um, it's getting appetite. It's got quite a lot of gold I'm quite surprised about, but yeah, 
it seems to have got quite a lot of materials. And it's not damaging the train or anything, so yeah, feel free to set this thing up and you will not have, have to worry about damaging the terrain. And it's really not that strenuous, guys, due to the way it works. So, you know, it won't cause any server lag or anything. So yeah, I think that about draws the video to a conclusion, though. So thank you for watching, guys. Hope you've enjoyed. Goodbye from Peter Plum.